The Notre Dame Institute has a long history dating back over a hundred years. The reconstruction and rehabilitation of the centre became a cherished project of Pope Paul VI. Starting from 1973, Notre Dame of Jerusalem was gradually resurrected as an international pilgrimage centre of the Holy See. On December 13, 1978, a decree signed by St. John Paul II was issued erecting the centre as a pontifical institute and ecumenical holy place. On Sunday, October 17, His Excellency Monsignor Adolfo Tito Iana, new Apostolic Nuncio in Israel and Cyprus and Apostolic Delegate in Jerusalem and Palestine, celebrated Holy Mass together with Father David Steffi, Director of the Institute, Monsignor Tomas Grisha, First Councillor of the Nunciatur, and Father Natale Albino, Second Secretary. After a warm greeting to the faithful in attendance, Archbishop Iana recalled the history and nature of the Notre Dame Institute. We should uh, remember that uh, this was made, elevated as an institute, or pontifical institute of Notre Dame uh, Center by as soon as uh, Pope John Paul II assumed the pontificate, the papacy. And this is one of the, among the first acts that he made to give an importance precisely of this center. You know. And uh, throughout this, this period that it has existed, this center really has animated pilgrims, have uh, offered to the pilgrims a spiritual, uh, a, a spiritual experience of what it is to make, make a pilgrimage in the Holy Land. And not only that, what is beautiful in this place, which is a pontifical institute, is that the real center here is the chapel, the chapel of Our Lady of Peace. And it shows to us and to the world around us, to everyone, that we are here gathering so that we pray for everyone as God's children. That's why we pray for peace. Archbishop Iana also recalls the mission of Notre Dame Institute as a parish. I go back to the fact that this is where you have a parish. This is the parish of the Pope. This place is the parish of the Pope. And the, the delegate here has been sent in his instead. So acting here, he brings what the Pope has in his heart the blessing he has, he gives it through this place. And uh, not only prayer, but this place is also a center where we cultivate cultural awareness, historical awareness. And that contributes to uplift everyone. In 2004, during the pontificate of John Paul II, it came under the administration of the Congregation of the Legionaries of Christ, Father David tells what pilgrims who stay at the Notre Dame Institute can expect. 90% of those who stay here are part of pilgrim groups from all over the world. And coming, they have that pilgrim mentality. And so when they come to Notre Dame, they want to experience that and have that uh, experience of the holy places and holy sites also here. So they're seeking a nourishment of their soul, of their spirit, to come and experience the hospitality that we can offer them in the name of the Vatican and in the name of the church. And therefore, at the center of what we do is our chapel. And our chapel is a powerhouse where people of all religions and all faiths can find strength and nourishment. So when one comes here, they're here to nourish their mind and their soul and their spirit. And that's the type of hospitality that we intend to offer when someone comes here. In addition to a large auditorium that welcomes local Christians and pilgrims for conferences and artistic events, the Institute also has a training school for young people, especially in the culinary arts. It is also offered to children in summertime to learn the art of gastronomy as well as some tips for healthy eating. Although the sign at the entrance to the Institute put up by the Jerusalem City Hall calls it a hotel, for Father David it is an international pilgrimage centre. 
During the pandemic, it received no government subsidy. Because we're nonprofit, we don't have the help of the government. And we have that separation in a certain sense of separation of state and religion that provides us with this opportunity also to use whatever we can to be able to support ourselves. And that's very healthy, but it was very hard because many of the other hospitality places couldn't survive without the help of the government. And that makes it very important for us to also have the means to be able to support ourselves. And that's where the nonprofit church status comes here.